And welcome back to the Dancers Auto Repair Playoff pregame show here on the Westmoreland Sports Network as we get set for the Trojans and Central Valley. A semifinal game, again for the second year in a row as I sit down next to my buddy Ox, Joe Milan. Last year we sat in another room. Today we're in the middle school auditorium. Last year the Audion, and we had this same conversation. How gratifying is it to get back to this moment again? I mean, Flick, it, it's a magical experience. I mean, coming from Derry and then moving the way through, uh, you never, this is the stuff you dream of, being able to go back to back to back. And it's just a credit to our kids and, and the work they put in. Ox, what a run. Four straight years in the playoffs. This senior class, 40 wins in their career. I mean, you, you, just, you just can't ask for any more than that. Yeah, and again, it's, it's, a, it's a credit to our kids, not just the senior class, but the classes down through. They've, they've really taken this message that started, you know, I would go back as far as 2014, not even the 2016 season, and kind of build upon it and build upon it and build upon it. And they take it to another level. So uh, it's great to see it. I'm happy for the kids. And, and we kind of tell them, don't take it for granted. I mean, these seasons aren't, uh, some of these kids have never experienced losing seasons. Uh, and they don't, you know, they don't grow on trees. They, they're hard to do uh, to what we're doing here. So uh, we always tell them, you know, appreciate it. Don't take it for granted. Last year, again, we sat here and we talked about, you know, the Trojan team from last year and, and you know, what a special year it was, how many guys were, you were losing from that season. Did you ever even imagine you would be in this situation again today? Uh, we actually did. In fact, we had a, a you know, a coaches meeting a couple weeks ago, and we kind of were a little disappointed in the the eight and two to start. We really thought we could do better than that. Uh, but it's just the we like the narrative of uh, well, you lost this. You know, first it was you lost Tyler Belega. Who's going to replace him? You know, we know we have guys there that are going to step up, and uh, you know, especially on that offensive line coming forward. So we we are not surprised where we're at, but we're excited that the kids responded and did what they needed to do to get there. We talked earlier in the season before a game, you and I, uh, and. We mentioned about play calling and depth on the team, and, and you didn't have as many uh, weapons to choose from. But now we talk here several weeks later, and, of course, your workhorse is Justin Huss. What an incredible season yeah. that, that he's had. Uh, we'll talk about him here in a moment, Ox. But overall, you got some other guys involved, and, and they got better as the year went on, and it certainly helped the team in the overall climate of the offense, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, we really have a, a young backfield with, with Huss excluded uh, and, and some younger receivers as well. And so it was nice to get them some touches. And it was more a mental thing for them, getting used to that next level, uh, you know, watching the guys in front of them for so many years. And now they're kind of taking off. So it's always nice to be able to, to spread it around a little bit. And, uh, you know, you don't intentionally try to give Huss the yardage. But uh, when a kid's that fast, it's, uh, you know, it's hard to tell him not to go score a touchdown. So it's nice to have. There was a turning point in this season. I call it the turning point of the entire season. And it was against Elizabeth Forward. The Trojans were down 14 nothing, And then a trick play happened. And you don't see that all that often. Um, but you dialed one up that night. And it certainly worked. And I think that turned the whole complexion of that game around. You went on to win that game. And then I think it turned the whole season around because you just went on an absolute roll after that, not losing. Uh, yeah, it was kind of a frustrating game at first. I thought we had moved the ball well and then just some costly turnovers or stalling. And that's kind of been the story. We always tell the kids the only thing that can stop our offense is ourselves between turning the ball over or a penalty, uh, you know, things like that. Uh, and it was just a play that we had saw that, you know, we, we thought was going to work on film based on how Elizabeth Ford was super aggressive to our formations. Uh, a funny story behind that play to this day, uh, if you talk to Justin Huss, he'll tell you that he didn't remember what that play was supposed to be. <laughs> That's what I uh, he was in the huddle, uh, and so I don't know how it worked, but sometimes you'll, uh, you'll take the breaks, and uh, he threw a good ball, and uh, it kind of goes back to what people don't see on the, on the outside, is we had asked uh, Justin, uh, as well as several other, Matt McDowell, Price Donovan, to come work out as quarterbacks all summer, uh, and so guys don't see that. I mean, Justin has two attempts. You know, two, two completions, actually. It's two for two. I had one at Trobe and then one there. Um, and, and that translates to hours of working the quarterback position, taking snaps, working footwork. Even though he's a running back by trade, mm -hmm. it just kind of builds into the offense. And that's all done in the summer. So I don't think people realize how much work it takes just to line up and run that play, you know, uh, and take it for granted. But it's always fun when that works out and, uh, and good to see. And uh, so definitely helped us. It all starts up front and, you know, that's what you did in college and in high school, and you played the offensive line. And I know it just it sounds so cliche when you always talk about, you know, it, it all starts up front, you know, but it does. And, uh, you know, Justin had a tremendous season, 32 touchdowns. And I know he gives all the credit in the world to his offensive line. Uh, some of those touchdowns he wasn't even touched. 
Um, but talk about your offensive line, and then I want to talk about the game that Justin had a week ago because he was touched quite a bit, and he did something that he didn't have to do really all that much this year, and that's break a ton of tackles. So hit upon the offensive line first and then talk about Justin's game last week. Yeah, I, I love offensive line. That's my, my forte by trade. I, I actually sometimes – just sit back and watch them at work you know even though I'm the, I'm the coordinator when I watch film I always gravitate to watching them so I always laugh with coach Poe we'll notice those things first but uh it starts with the work that they and coach Poe have put in again in the summer I mean they they go at it uh, it's the the a fun group to watch in practice I sometimes kind of envy them when I'm down there in seven on seven which is an important aspect but you hear that banging and it kind of makes me turn around a little bit and, and, and look down there and see what's going on uh and it starts with Coach Poe and those kids attacking practice. Our seniors, especially Lucas Siaka, have done a great job of coming to practice to work and make the younger kids better, number one. Because, uh, again, don't forget, we got two young guys, Dylan Rhodes and Noah Simmerman, right. seeing a lot of time that wasn't planned because of some injuries. Uh, and those guys have been made better by our older group. Uh, but they, they approach practice. They have fun. They're out there hooting and hollering. Uh, you know, they'll even get on hustle a little bit and say, you know, if you would have cut here, <laughs> you would have right. scored easier. And so right. it's kind of fun to see. Um, but yeah, the, the line is great and it's been fun to watch and uh, I love watching those guys practice. And when you take a look at Justin's game on Friday, you know, it gets tougher as you move on in yep. the playoffs and you know that. And it was a tougher night for him. He didn't have as big of cracks as he normally does, but uh, he made a lot happen after being hit last yeah. week, didn't he? And absolutely, and that's a credit to the work that Justin has done. We all knew he was fast. He's been our you know, jet sweep guy for years, but uh, he's put a lot of good work in that weight room uh, and really gotten stronger uh, and also learned how to run behind that line. Uh, I mean, the teams are starting to stack the box now, and they're, they're, there's more guys there than we can block sometimes, and sometimes you've got to take it straight ahead. You know, uh, I think back to that, the, the overtime touchdown, and you look at it, and he took it the exact correct place up the middle. Uh, you know, a couple years ago, uh, a younger Huss may have tried to bounce that. And that's the work he's done and his vision, how it's improved, and really kind of gone to that next level. So in addition to breaking tackles, it's just seeing where it's going to be and not trying to bounce everything. And it's been fun to watch, and uh, we kind of know what teams are going to do now. Mm -hmm. uh, it opens up some other things with us. And so uh, it's been a good time to watch the line, and especially Huss work. Uh, and also the other guys carrying the ball. I think uh, – Koontz and Mikey Kelly and Donovan have done a good yeah. job. The yardage might not show, but those, those touchdown runs they've had where we're kind of using Huss as a decoy, those are big for us too. Ox, it's no secret as an offensive coordinator that you want to get the ball in Justin's hands. And it's also no secret as a defensive coordinator knowing that we need to contain or stop Justin Huss. No team has really been able to do that. I mean, I know last week he had to, you know, break some tackles, and it was a, it was a harder type of night, but he still got his 200, almost 200 yards. Uh, so, you know, what's the secret there? Is it just the fact that, uh, you know, you just go at it and mono e mono, or do you just find some loopholes to get him the football? Uh, it's a little bit of both. Uh, one thing I think our kids don't get enough credit for is our kids do a great job in film study as well as no understanding the game. It's one thing to draw these plays up. But to be able to go out and execute them at that level and change the snap count. Uh, our, our kids do, they're, they're students of the game for sure. Uh, and so between our offensive line being as good as they are uh, and those guys being as football smart as they are, uh, it kind of makes it easy on me. My, my call sheet has evolved to about 20 pages long now. Uh, and it's a credit to those guys to be able to line up in those different formations and, and even little minor things like, hey, we're going to go on balance for this play. Uh, it's nice to be able to do that. And it's a credit to our kids studying, looking at film, knowing where to attack, you know, knowing the tendencies of the player against them, and, and, and we go from there. So we kind of know what we're going to get ahead of time. Uh, and with that line and his speed, it's, it's tough to stop. I saw the play sheet, and he's not kidding. It is pretty big. Um, but uh, they narrow it down, and you make the plays that work for you and uh, use those and have the other ones as a backup just to see what's happening. You know, uh, I know that we have to get you back to class here, uh, Coach Ox, but uh, just a couple of uh, more questions. One is about Central Valley, the opponent that you have tomorrow. Um, what do you see in them defensively that's uh, you know, going to be tough to exploit, and what do you think you have to do? And let me just finish with this. Does Justin Huff ha Huss have to have another Justin Huss game to win that? We're real big on we'll take what the defense gives us. So I would love for Huss to have a huge game again. But in reality, we're going to take whatever weakness they show uh, and that's kind of what we try to attack. And like you said, find out what works and stick with it. Uh, but the one thing on their defense that sticks out is they're not very big as opposed to Beaver Falls we just saw, but they are fast. I mean, there's speed all over the place. 
Uh, their D-line is very quick off the ball, good with their hands. Their linebackers are fast. Their secondary is fast. Uh, when I was doing the breakdown, something that kind of stuck out to me is their last five games, not counting penalties, the longest play they've allowed is 41 yards. Uh, that kind of sticks out to me. So we really got to be more of a, a ground and pound in the sense that we can't get frustrated if these runs are only going for four or five yards. I and mean, we always tell our line, that's our goal. We've been kind of spoiled with these big runs from Huss. Uh, we got to make sure we can get those, uh, you know, kind of keep it consistent. Uh, but they got a lot of speed out there, which is the big difference, um, you know, almost similar to the to the, the Burl team where we knew they were going to have some speed out there. Not the size, but the speed. So it's uh, staying on our blocks and, and making sure that we get that positive yardage and we'll be in good shape. It's going to be a cold night tomorrow. So are your legs going to be showing? <laughs> are you going to wear shorts tomorrow? Uh, absolutely. I will put it on record that I will never be caught coaching a football game in pants ever. <laughs> I said, I said it last year, you and Bill Chirpak. I tell you, I can't believe Aubrey doesn't get on you. I'm sure she does about oh, she that does. at home. And uh, I, I always want to end with, with the family and how everybody's doing there. I know she's, she's great. And you have AJ and... Yes, we're expecting number two, number two. In, in March coming up. So uh, uh, hopefully Pi Day. I'm shooting as a math teacher. You know, 3.14 would be a good day to have a kid. Uh, and so we're shooting for that. So uh, uh, I can't thank Aubrey enough and my family. They, they're all the support in the world, uh, the long nights, and they get longer as you go on. Uh, and she's there taking care of AJ. But uh, yes, they do pick on me. Uh, it's become a running joke now where she just knows that I'm going to wear that same pair of shorts. And uh, it's the way it works. Uh, and all through the school, the teachers, are, even now they're like, you know, are you going to wear those shorts again? And it's, uh, it's definite, yes. <laughs> it's a definite. I'd wear them to work if I could. But. No, the man in the shorts, it's about 6'5". <laughs> well, you have to be a good math teacher to add up all the numbers this year that the Trojans have accumulated on offense. And this guy right here is uh, the guy behind it as far as uh, calling the plays and the team, of course, gets the job done. Ox, as always, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I know the story's still not done being Absolutely. written uh, for this team. So best of luck and... Go get them. <laughs> Thanks, Flick. Central Valley again, yes. And take three for Central Valley here as uh, Coach Ox prepares uh, for that game tomorrow. And we are on the Dancers, and he knows who they are as well, auto repair pregame show tonight here from North Allegheny High School. Stay with us. We'll continue. We'll have a lot more coming up on our special playoff edition of the pregame show right here on the Westmoreland Sports Network.